All right, so I started snooping around to see if I could get some more updated information about the most popular majors that students are applying to. And unfortunately, not all that information is just given out. Uh, so you have to do kind of more proxy, look at certain data sets and, and, and assume and, and project some things. So what I mean by that is, for example, I think one of the best ways to uh, have an understanding of what the competitive majors are going to be is to actually look at the transfer data if they offer it to you like it, it's not the same thing as freshmen but it's pretty darn close and so I'm gonna provide the link to this below in the video description but as you can see there's a lot of data and you can see for places like UCLA in total you're looking for a minimum GPA for a high school students just take that uh, that transfer GPA and just turn it into your uh, compare it to your unweighted and it should be the same thing essentially um, granted, I could see some naysayers uh, based on what I just said about how a weighted GPA also indicates like impacted level grades or courses that you took. I understand all that. But to simplify things down for, for layman terms here, just look at the, your unweighted GPA and see if you match up and see where you belong, essentially. See where your range is. Um, and do the same thing for your major choices. So you can take a look and see... Um, Interestingly enough, some of the uh, arguably quote unquote easier majors like genders and women's studies actually has a higher threshold, like a higher ceiling for admitted GPA to 4.0 compared to, let's say, a hard science like um, molecular bio or integrative biology. So that was interesting to me, but I'm not, I, I, th I have a couple of explanations in mind kind of whirling already that if you're going to intend to do a niche um, social science major, um, having good grades is, is kind of the ideal You'll see the opposite of that with sociology. I think like sociology is a very common major that students who didn't really do as much or weren't as technical, what they do is they realize they just follow their parents doing volunteering stuff. You know, they went to church and volunteered and then hung out doing other things that were not so STEMI. And they get advised, you know, the best choice at that point would be to go towards a sociology major. Um, and that I think is starting to become a little bit inflated. But yeah, Take a look through this. I just wanted to point to something more interesting for my take. Um, I'm just interested in seeing what the most popular majors are. Not necessarily their chance of getting in. This is just percentages of their popularity of, of how many declared. So amongst first generation and not first generation, um, you can actually use this second link and separate it based on campuses. And that's going to help kind of clear the noise and be then translatable to most other private schools as well. So as you can see, undeclared is really high. I, I would argue the higher you go up in rank, let's say U.S. News ranked 20 and up, the less undeclared becomes this prominent. And so I usually kind of cancel that out and realize that it's biology and psychology and computer science. And then from there, you have econ. Um, I'm assuming business should be much higher up. That's interesting to me, actually. I normally tell my students that business is like the number one most popular major right now. Maybe if I, so biology, political science, computer science, biochemistry, business economics at a 1.7. Interesting. San Diego. San Diego's heavy on comp sci and bio, bioinformatics. So I could see that a lot. Here's econ at 10. Business econ at three. Hmm. Let's do Berkeley. Computer science, economics. Guys, I, I wouldn't necessarily translate most popular, what you're seeing right now, to most difficult. My experience is immediately telling me, like, econ, while it's being shown as the third most popular, is not the third most difficult to get into at Berkeley. Um, I would argue, actually, it would be the, the business side. Um, they have MET and a couple of other really prestigious types of programs like that. Uh, so don't take it in that way. Just understand that, uh, these are major choices where I guess the way I'll phrase it is these are major choices where there's going to be a lot of students and therefore there's a greater calling for each student to showcase a higher degree of experience and specialization. So um, the, the kind of the thing you want to understand is when a, when a major is extremely popular, let's say compared to 200 students applying to one major, this major has 2000 students. Chances are, those two that you may think that's more competitive because, like, look at that! Oh my gosh, ten times as many students applying. But 
how many of those 10 times more students are actually qualified, are actually competitive. So in some sense, the bigger the, the applicant pool, the bigger the popularity, the better chance sometimes you have an, in, in, in showing that you have a higher IQ level and an EQ level and experience level. Um, yeah, I just thought that this would be interesting to share. Uh, in my mind, I'm still gonna stick to it. The most popular majors, uh, especially if you come from a place like Southern California, I, I think it depends in the region, but generally speaking, I'd probably put the top three to be business, uh, computer science, and something bio that's related to pre-med or health. Uh, there are some niche exceptions to that, like at UCI for nursing, because nursing is really strong there. And then some schools are really strong for architecture or sometimes for more of the creative arts where it's like cinematography, uh, film industry. But for the most part, business. Let's see if I can actually find it. Now I'm curious. So would I be able to identify yeah, you probably go based on admit rate here. So can we adjust the admit rate? Yes, we can. Cool. Okay, so we're, this is going to be UC Berkeley. Um, hmm. I probably should have done this before recording, but whatever. Let's do it. So UC Berkeley, no surprise. Uh, computer science is at a 4%. And take a look at this. Data science is at 15%. I recommend data science to all of my students. Nowadays, man, just learn how to do machine learning and data analysis, and you could pretty much pick up the rest once you get into college. So I've often considered computer science to be like the thing that a lot of parents want you to do, but don't realize if you've been in the industry and seen like college applications for as long as I have, how you can just take one sidestep and boom, you've literally quadrupled your chances of getting in. Um, Let's see business. Business administration. Look at that. There you go, guys. Business, 4%. That's why I usually recommend just go with econ. Do they show econ here? Let's see. Applied math is also pretty good. Statistics is really good, by the way. These are core skill sets that eventually lead into business and economics. So uh, why put yourself through the pressure point of a 4% acceptance chance, right? And then there's econ at 22%. Well, there's a counter reason why. Obviously, like when you go to a UC school, it's going to be harder to transfer majors. Notice how I said harder, not impossible. I changed my major at UCLA three times. Um, I come from personal experience that as long as you can maintain a good GPA for the prerequisites and follow the procedures to, to declare a new major, it's not really that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, uh, let's, oh, one more thing. Let me check bio. So bio, eh, it's not too bad. You're in the 20s range. Um, bioengineering is in the 21. So in truth, like I'm just looking at the ones that are sub single digit acceptances. So here you have ethnic studies, which is masked. I would, I would watch that. That's not a big deal. It's probably like noise in the data business administration. As I mentioned, to me, it's the number one Asian male major, um, computer science, 4%. Cognitive science is at a 9%. That's actually interesting to me. 200 students applied. Eventually, CogSci goes into things like AI, um, neural network uh, kind of research. Uh, maybe that's the reason why it has a higher ceiling. So it's a 13% for chemistry, chemical biology. So the higher techniques here, psychology at 6%. Guys, psychology. So many students want to apply for psychology, and they don't realize that it's not an easy major. Um, you have to do something special to stand out for psych, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, hopefully this helps. Check out the links below. Until next time.